NCERT, NCERT, and Sir brings a distinguished background in computer science with over 16 years of experience in teaching, training, and research. And uh, Dr. Rajesh has a strong research portfolio, having uh, authored uh, over 30 research papers in various uh, international journals and conferences. So for this, I, uh, I would like to invite Dr. Rajesh. So please, uh, I, uh, I uh, switch on to Dr. Rajesh. Yes, sir. Over to you, sir. So you are on mute, sir. Thank you, Anna. Uh, good afternoon, all of you. Namaskar to all of you. Uh, well, I know that it is going to be very hard to sit in the lecture after the lunch. So obviously, since it is a part of the training, we have to go ahead with uh, some of the learning concepts. So quickly, we will jump with uh, the scheduled title. Please hold on, just I share my screen. Hope the screen is visible. Yes, sir, it is visible. Yeah, today's title is uh, to discuss about uh, the accessible uh, digital resources. This is with the context of the children with special needs. Obviously, we should understand uh, uh, in, the, in the current scenario of the population, being a teacher, we have additional uh, resource to understand the child's inability to learn. Whenever we talk about uh, special needs, we immediately come to the conclusion or to the point of myth saying that uh, the handicap, the child may be a handicap, the child may be uh, disabled. Uh, it may be any type of uh, disability that we immediately come to the conclusion to. No, still children with normal stage has some problem in understanding or the problem of learning something from a good teacher. So in that context, a teacher has to put himself uh, into the shoes so that uh, the children understands the concept into it. So in that case, also we have to understand what is this accessible digital resources and what are we talking about? And in fact, you should understand the recent uh, newly uh, key, uh, the word used by the government of India is simply referred as divang, right? When we say divang, it's not only the special needs, normal children who doesn't understand, who feels lazy in learning, who feels in uh, secured in understanding a concept. So many keywords are being re redefined to make this understand. So before we go into the detailed concepts of this uh, handling or making a learning point very easier to the children, uh, we have to understand these concepts. So first we'll move on with the next. Uh, I'll show you a small clip, which is being sponsored by the uh, UNICEF. Please see this. Hope the volume is okay. Should I increase the volume? Sir, it is not audible. Audible? Not yet, sir. 
सर वी कैन डू वन थिंग वेन वी शेयर द स्क्रीन वाइल शेयरिंग द स्क्रीन देर इज अ बॉक्स एट द बॉटम वाइल शेयरिंग वेयर इट इज रिटन शेयर साउंड सो यू कैन री शेयर योर स्क्रीन सो जस्ट री शेयर योर स्क्रीन एंड वेन यू विल बी री शेयरिंग सिलेक्ट दैट ऑप्शन ऑफ शेयर साउंड वेन यू विल क्लिक ऑन शेयर स्क्रीन there is uh, uh, on the left corner there is share sound and there is a small arrow next to share sound you have to select stereo and you have to select share sound and then share the content then it will be audible okay here uh, we can uh, for for now we will see the video without a sound uh, our objective is only to observe the point so kindly uh, adapt to this uh, muted uh, just observe this video uh, maybe the audio is not Yeah, yeah. Just a minute. sorry for a small mess uh, i i think the video with the audio will be now clear hope it's fine yes sir yes sir it's automatically doing it things you should have understood here i have taken only one uh, scenario of uh, one type of disability but still there are huge and as for uh, the uh, the um, uh, what do you call the health organization of india we find that n number of diseases being reinvented in different different names where it is really a pain for uh, both the teachers and the parents and the societies responsibility to support all natures of children right so in that case uh, welcome to the lecture of assistive technologies so this is the uh, title that we are focusing on today's lecture as the first part uh, whenever we talk about assistive we talk about disability the disability results from the interaction between the persons with impairments when we say impairments we are calling them as 
divam we should not use impairments we should use divam in the near future because when you use impairment that is also one type of discrimination that we are doing for the children so even cbsc as well as our ncert has already been there with the new name of divams right so what is there uh, uh, to understand here when we talk about assistive is that the attitude and the environmental barriers should be removed so that is the first point that we have to understand and all of a sudden when we think into the concept of assistive technologies we come to the myths thinking that technology means high end technology no when we talk about technology there are low level technologies there are medium level technologies and high level technologies as far as the disability is concerned based on and the type of disability we can select what type of uh, methodology or technology we are going to tell so the first part is going to be the software it can be any device or gadget or even a system that can assist a person with the special needs a major prerequisite request to achieve inclusive education because we need everybody to learn we need everybody to share their knowledge we need everybody to understand for their career growth right so the universal design for learning has a great role to play when you look into the next uh, content uh, as far as the statistical data which is provided by the census of 2011 you see it is very amazing to look into this particular a slide where it shows different types of dis disabilities here right so hearing <clears throat> so how many of them are there in the here you see the first one 19% of the population is having disability in looking into we call them as low vision simply blind we, uh, we have one eye working the other eye partially working so many things are there within this 19 percentage of this census data and you find here problem in hearing again you have 7 percent in the speech you have 20 percent in the physical movement and then you have 6 percent in the mental restoration and then we have 3 percent in the mental illness 18 percent which cannot be classified excuse me sir Anji. Uh, one of the participants is requesting to enlarge the screen. So, if possible, please. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Here you can see the different types of uh, disabilities which are currently being analyzed by the government of India. Whereas, when you see from this 19. So this particular cycle of 3% all are defined, which has some predefined values. Reissues are predefined. But when you take this 18%, you say it is any other. Uh, this must be visible with a broader idea. Yes, sir, it is visible. Yeah, uh, this 18%, please note here, any other, this is the concept that we are still doing plenty number of research towards this. Because this 18%, which is pointing out to the concept of any other, which means it is neither classified nor defined. So where our still research is focused on, whereas when you take the last 8%, which is having multiple disorders, people who are blind are also hearing, having, having problem with the hearing. People who are having problem with speech are also not having problem with the, the other multiple disorders. So many things are there had to be defined. So as a teacher, we should understand this particular area to be focused. So as far as the census in 2011, Differently able population in India is 26.8 million, which is a total of 2.21 percentage. So it is going to be a damn, uh, a serious issue for us. Further continued, I will even show you the age-wise uh, disability parameters here. 
you can see zero to four years and 20 to 20. these are some of the statistical analysis to have a clear view of what we are talking about and why this is a need for us to understand that is the point to be noted so when we come to the into the detailed concept of assistive technology you see what are the problems and what are the solutions available so we have uh, at the center the technology whereas we have all solutions for each problem a child may have problem in having accessing this particular laptop, a problem in making a note, in talking with others, problem in reading, problem in hearing, problem to maintain time management. This is common for all the children. This is not only for a specific type of disabled children, child. So this is a common for all. Most of the children who are well enriched or which doesn't, which who does not, or who or she or who, whomsoever it may be, does not have any disability, still they could not manage this time. So again, this assistive technology is going to help them. A person who is not able to speak properly, so then we are going to use this particular vision. Organization a task, he cannot manage, the children cannot manage himself. So then also we need assistive technology. So these are some of the examples where this assistive technology is pointing out towards. So that is what we have to understand. So what are the common assistive technologies available in the market or which are supportive with the market? So the first one is uh, text-to-speech. When we type something, the system automatically prosounds. We call it as prosound. Whatever is typed, it bounces back with a voice. Even the voice can be modulated or selected by us. If a child does not uh, understand or doesn't wish a male voice, masculine voice, the system will help them to change the voice. If a boy or a girl is convenient with a lady voice or feminine voice, then it can be changed. So the first, you can see text to speech, then speech to text, which you call it as normally a dictation based, word prediction, screen reader, screen recorder, and OCR, which is normally helping us to convert all of our PDF files into a normal world. So this you should have seen while conversion, normal conversions. And these above all are also used as an integrated with the Braille for their displays. So uh, most, of, uh, most of us know what is the use of Braille, right? So the other one is related with your screen magnifiers. So when you say screen magnifiers, Screen magnifiers are only for the low vision category. Braille is for fully disabled children. OCR is only for the hearing enabled child. Screen recorder will also help you to, uh, will also help the particular uh, uh, in, uh, in disabled, which you call it as uh, the low vision category. Again, screen re reader is also helping for the low vision category. Word prediction is only for the uh, Hearing ability. So the specific disease is pointed out towards here, right? So when you go very keenly inside text to speech, because this is what uh, going to be the common platform for all. So the technology that reads the digital data or digital text allowed convert words into audio. It helps people who struggle with reading. This normally happens. Certain kids who have stumbling problem. We who, who stumble to speak a single word, pronounce a single word. So them for them, for their practice, it can be helpful. Reading speed can usually be controlled. Some people speak very fastly. Some people talk very slowly. So there should be balance between reading and speaking. So these can be modulated. And here for modulation, we need not think that the child is disabled. No, it's not coming under the category of disabled. Some TT tools also have read aloud from images. You have to show the image. Seeing the image, the screen understands and then reads it aloud. For example, recently we have the concept of QR code. Wherever we go, we have a QR code. So unless you don't have a mobile phone or unless you don't have a, a what you call clear view of your vision, you cannot take a screenshot or you cannot go for the processing to see what information is hidden in the QR code. So in that case, now this TTS tool is also used to find out the information inside the QR code. So the next is types of TTS tools. 
built in text speech in devices which is now coming along with the desktop and laptops followed by smartphones digital tables or tablets followed by the pro so these are all inbuilt we are not going to buy anything we are all inbuilt tech apps which we have to understand because without knowing the information we cannot share it with others because being a teacher we should first experience it so that we are not being fooled by somebody else right because today's children are very very smart they are more tech savvy than us so in that point of view we should we should be more about them so the second is web web based tools some websites have tts tools on itself for example earlier you should have seen the chrome chrome is also a web browser the next is text to speech app which is also downloadable as a separate app for your tab or a smartphone also you don't want to have an app you have only a computer with you yes you can directly download a software so what are the other ai tools because we are all fond of ai today the word itself is so booming artificial intelligence wherever you go artificial intelligence follows you tomorrow so so these terminologies are being rolled out right so these are some of the ai tools that uh, you can quickly note down or ocr the first is ocr second is tts third is dictation the next is screen reader so i i do not know how many of you understood what is jaws and what is the nvda these are the names of the softwares which reads whatever is given inside it for whom it is used it is specifically used for the low vision or the blind children because they do not they, they are not in a position of reading anything looking into anything so this two softwares are very much helpful for them to understand what they are you could have even seen today this narrator is an windows based software which is installed in a small kit based device which helps them to read the environment for example if they walk through a path the system automatically decides and advises the person to lift his leg to climb a staircase it also says who is standing in front whether it is a male whether it is a female how much distance he has to take extra care has been given designed based on the narrator so you can see many number of technologies behind it the, the, the last one screen magnification it is a magnifier i have already spoken about this. this is only for the low vision category the child is able to see but only either it a keeping the paper at a very closer side of his even the paper touches his nose to read so that much of magnification the child needs so hence that particular disease is simply referred as low vision or else there is the other part the child can see from the larger point of view largest distance point of view but he cannot read anything which is going to be very close so the opposite of that so we need magnifiers for them so when we talk about all these softwares we immediately come to the question mark like is this available with our android then what is android providing android is a operating system which comes along with the mobile phones today everybody knows this but what does it am android do it helps for reading you see here talk back talk back is a software is a app that comes along with the android it is also the same which you saw earlier tts only the terminology is tts but when you go into using many number of devices the name of the app changes rest the options are going to be same and also the usage is going to be the same so talk back a screen reading feature uses tts technology to read aloud text from the websites emails and more the tool can be changed and the reading speed can be adjusted so this is what the first point the second it also this android also helps us for writing built in dictation by pressing the microphone and the on screen google keyboard users can type with their voice the keyboard also has built in word prediction which suggests the word so this for whom this must be a, for whom it must be so useful which type you can decide the third which is so defined for motor cells 
when we talk about motor skills as far as the education is concerned, it points out to all types of children who are lazy, who are who are going to be lazy in the sense not able to understand, not able to run along with the peers. So accessibility menu on screen to control Android device. You can control gestures, hardware buttons, navigations, and more. It also helps to take screenshots, lock your screen, open Google Assistant. These are the name of the settings and notings. So where, based on this, what happens is the child able to move his nerves, make his nerves move so that some skills, some type of attraction towards the device makes him to learn. We want to motivate him to learn. We want to make him to understand. So this motor skills will make him to go with understanding. The next is, these are different types of keyboards. You would have seen this. Uh, only a few people would have seen this. You can see the different types of keyboard specifically are specially designed only for the Divam children. These are all also used as an alternate for Braille. You can see this. Apart from keyboard, whenever we talk about keyboard, we immediately come to the point of input device. No, keyboard is only one device. Other than a, a keyboard, we have alternative input devices. You can see here, head pointers, a switch, a single switch entry devices, foot switches. You can see the names here. You can just Google out with each and every uh, point out after the classes or whenever you are free. This is only to make you know these are some of the input devices for your understanding. Sip and puff switches, eye tracking software, which is so useful for many of the uh, low vision category. Augmentative and alternative communication. Whenever we talk about augmentation, this is not recommended for any of the eye disease based children. Augmented and alternative communication is only useful for the children who have hearing loss, but they have their eyes to learn. Only the eyes is going to be the input device for them to learn more rather than ear as a supportive. So for those children, augmentative and alternative communication is going to be too useful for them. So the next is Dynovax AAC device. This is another biggest disease which is currently there in, in our country. So for them, we use this type of device. You can go through this uh, link of video that uh, has been linked in the later part. Braille display, this you know for whom it is going to be there. The other is also a note ticker. This is also going to be uh, only for the fully blind children. So apart from this apps and softwares, we do have some of the web. As I said to you already, Chrome is there. In Chrome, what do you do? Web, we are going to use only web pages. Web is fundamentally designed to work for all people. Whatever their hardware, software, language, location, or ability is going to be. Because whenever we say web page, it is open. It can be opened at any place, irrespective of whatever is displayed. So in that case, you have to understand. However, when websites, application technologies, or tools are badly designed, they can create barriers. The reason why this is given to you is when you are going to create e-content, the e-content should be in a very generic way. When you say generic way, it should be having its own interoperability options in running in all the web natures. We have to plan, we have to properly prepare the content, we have to design the content. We should see to that the content is properly integrated with our design. So the design is not only for the children, it is also it is also inclusive of the warm children. So in that case, we have to keep all these things in our mind. Alternative text for images this is also another one for people who cannot see and use a screen reader. Keyboard input for those who cannot use a mouse due to limited fine motor control. Transcripts for audio. This is also again the TTS. Sign language. Sign language interpretation of audio content. Operable user interface and navigation.
So we will quickly go with some of the videos. Charlotte and I'm Jared's mom. Jared is an amazing young man. He has a great sense of humor. He loves spending time on the computer and interacting with people around the world and also at us as a family at home. Jared was born with cerebral palsy and it, it affects him physically but mentally and intellectually he's very smart. Jared uses a sip and puff to access his computer. The sip and puff sends a signal to Jared's environmental control unit on his wheelchair, which sends a signal to the TASH switch, which sends a signal to the IntelliKey switch. The IntelliSwitch sends a wireless signal to Jared's computer that controls a software program called Switch XS. Switch XS allows Jared to do anything on his computer by choosing options from a pop-up menu that scans through several choices. When he gets to the option he wants, he then uses his sip and puff to make the selection. He can type, control the mouse, and do anything on his computer. When Jared was in elementary school, we started working with the staff at the school to find technology that would help make him successful and also provide a recreational outlet for him in the computer field. Um, Jared's technology has changed over time. When Jared was in grade school, he used the leaf switch to access the computer. Um, then we changed when he was in high school to a jelly bean switch, which he would access by uh, hitting with his head. And now he uses the sip and puff, which has been the best um, for accuracy for him. Because of his drive to do well, he's doing, able to do what he is today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hope you saw the exact uh, scenario of what is sip and switch, right? So this ex exactly motivates most of the children who are 
physically normal but not doing anything we can even show these things for motivating them not to demotivate anybody but for motivating we can brief them saying that uh, a child uh, with such type of uh, uh, divan is able to develop his career with a positive note why can others so in that way we can motivate them not to uh, in a public or to finally show them i'll take you to the other video also because theoretically theoretically we have to uh, understand but practically when we see this we get more ideas as a teacher Hi, my name is Alok Gorman. Each and every video, you have to note down the disease, name of the person which has been showed in the video, and the disability. That will be more useful. I am 14 years old. I like to go shopping at the mall. I have two brothers named Cole and Carter. Hi, my name is Jello Gorman and my daughter is Ella Gorman. She is 14 years old and diagnosed with cerebral palsy. This is my Dynavox. I use it to talk. Dynavox is an augmentative communication device that helps her communicate with us and her peers and at school. When I look at a picture using my head mask, the Dynavox talks for me. Without the Dynavox, she was, had a difficulty communicating what her needs were. People tend to um, um, underestimate her ability or what she understood and what she was able to express. I like to write emails with my Dynavox. Before I had my Dynavox, I used a laptop. We started out with just a simple book chart that was broken into categories and she would eye gaze towards the pictures that she wanted. From there, we advanced to uh, trying out a Pathfinder, which had too many buttons for her and was a little bit frustrating for her. Um, so we went to a laptop. From there, we went to the Dynavox. I am learning to use more buttons to tell people what I am thinking. The school played a role in helping us find the Dynavox. Uh, the assistive technology specialist has been helping uh, the district who helps Ellie. Um, was very instrumental in helping us. Ellie's on an IEP, and so it was an IEP team decision to determine what device um, would work best for her. So they helped select the Dynavox, trial it, and then helped with funding. We contacted Dynavox first and did a, I believe, a six week trial. During that trial period, we had to write extensive amount of monitoring to give detail about the trial. The speech pathologist, along with the assistive technology specialist from the district, helped in writing all of that up. And then we had to submit it to insurance to see if it would be approved. My teachers helped me with my Dynavox. I Please underline this word. My teachers help. So as a teacher, we do have more responsibility. So that is why we are slowly going into the concept of this particular assistive technologies. I've, uh, we've all had training from Dynavox and um, again, the assistive technology specialist has trained her IEP team. So modifications and additions that are added by at school and sometimes I add them at home as I think of things. Um, so it's really a team approach. 
At school, I can chat with friends, interact with my teachers, and practice my letters and numbers. The Dynavox has really opened up a lot of doors for Ellie in terms of just being able to tell us everything that she wants and needs, and as well as helped with school and communicating with her peers and include some social opportunities for her. And so we will continue to, you know, explore future technology options, see if there's anything new and improved and, and better, which I'm sure they will be in the future. So hope uh, you had seen uh, plenty number of uh, disabilities and their its own uh, softwares. So maybe you could uh, further uh, quench on more about this particular assistive technologies. Again, I'll go back to this particular statistical analysis for your understanding. Please listen, uh, please understand, please learn, please adapt quickly to support the children. So again, you can see the different types of up to, uh, up to this mental uh, illness, we have to concentrate more on this particular, any other. So uh, with this, I'll stop here. Uh, with, with a break of three or four minutes, we'll go with the next lecture of OER. If anybody has any questions, can put it on the chat box. Uh, is anybody have any question regarding the the PPT and uh, the session? They can ask their queries with the sir. If no queries, we'll take a short break of three or four minutes so that we'll join with the next lecture of OER. Yes, sir. Yeah.